going on everyone? CP Mod here back with another video and today we're here with this month's PC build. Now when it comes to building PCs, not many of us actually think of setting up a virtual computer to serve multiple different people, but that is exactly what we're here to plan out in today's build. Now the idea of virtualized computers like this is either to save money, save power, make your computing experience more centralized or just many other reasons, but for today we're going to be covering a few of those reasons and some of the limitations of a virtualized computer. Now for our target build price, we're looking at about $15 a head and we're going to be looking at four different people using this particular computer. So in all, the budget is actually fairly large for this type of build, but when you bring it back, each person's going to have about a $1,500 or so dollar PC at their disposable to use when they want to. Now with that being said, the software we are going to be using will be known as Lime Tech Unraid Server Pro. Now this is something that I use in my work field, not really day to day, but I do use it quite often and I have to to say for what it is it does an awesome job it goes into very detailed sort of settings where you can choose the amount of CPU cores how much RAM what video card to use you can choose a lot of different things in the settings however with that being said it's got a really simple and clean and also to pretty good looking interface that is simple for the average person to set up there's no need to know coding or programming or even know how to use Linux everything is pretty simple to go ahead and set up with this particular software on top of that we also to get a NAS unit out of our computers. So not only are we getting four computers, we're also to getting a NAS unit if we wanted to use it as that as well. Now with that being said, we do need to know our limits when it comes to virtualization as having this super powerful computer might be awesome, but there are definitely some limitations that we do have at the moment. First and foremost is the peripherals you have connected to the computer. Because what we'll be doing is assigning a certain set of peripherals to each set of PCs, we do not only need to have the same peripherals on these certain PCs, so for example, if you have a Razer keyboard, you can't just sort of up and go into a Logitech one if you wanted to just for some random reason. You need to actually go into the settings and tell it to look for the particular Logitech board that you went ahead and bought. On top of that, you can't have the exact same peripherals as other people using the particular computer. So for example, if you have a Razer keyboard and someone else has a Razer keyboard of the exact same model, you won't be able to use it as the computer will see them as the same thing and start putting inputs into each other's computers and it just just won't work. If you have two different models of a keyboard from the same brand that will work but just not the exact same model. So if you're looking at buying one super powerful computer and then the same set of peripherals for everyone in your house, you may want to rethink it a little bit as that might not exactly work. Also two audio will be handled over HDMI. So you may need to grab yourself a little dongle that splits HDMI out into audio as well as video or you might need to grab yourself a monitor that supports audio over HDMI. The reason why we're doing Doing this is number one, we don't have enough PCI Express slots to actually go ahead and install sound cards for everyone, and also two, we can't use onboard sound because that will be connected up to the server as opposed to each person's PC. So we'll be handling audio through HDMI. Then finally, the way that we're setting this up needs to be run through a HDMI cable to your location. Whilst you could go ahead and set up a wireless connection, it's better to have an actual physical cable running from the graphics card in the server device all the way up to your computer to monitor. Now this won't be much of a problem if all your computers are centralized in one computer room in the house, but if your computers are dotted all over the house, you may want to look into wireless accessories or running some long cables. So you do need to keep that in mind when you're putting together a system like this. However, with that being said, enough talking and let's jump into what we're going to be having. Now each system we're looking at about $1,500 per system and we want at least a quad core with 16 gigabytes of RAM, some sort of video card to serve as gaming or multimedia depending depending on what you're doing, as well as plenty of storage. So that's what we're going to be aiming for, and the CPU that we picked was the 5960X. This is an 8 core 16 threaded CPU and can definitely be overclocked. Now the reason why we went with the 5960X is mainly because it's 8 cores with 16 threads and has the potential to be overclocked. Whilst we won't exactly be pushing any overclocks in today's video, we will just be running at stock speeds but nonetheless can definitely be pushed a lot further. Now the main reason we went with the 5960X instead of a Xeon part was mainly due to cost because the Xeon part is going to be a little bit more expensive but also too we needed the PCI Express lanes in order to run all the video cards we'll be running in this particular system. So with that we're going to split out our 16 threads into four cores each and we're pretty much good to go. So theoretically two physical cores with two hyper threaded ones. Now for our cooler we went with Noctua NHD15. The reason for this is this is acting as a server device 
us and we don't want any downtime. Water coolers introduce things like pumps and tubes and extra fans and all these other bits and pieces that could either get blocked or jammed or clogged and it's just not worth it. So we went ahead and just grabbed ourselves a standard tower cooler known as the Noctua NHD15. For the motherboard, we grabbed ourselves the MSI X99 SLI crate. Other than looking pretty awesome in my opinion, it has plenty of PCI Express lanes that we need. Also too, has 16x slots everywhere that is positioned in the right way to run four two slot video cards. And on top of that, the most important part is the RAM support. We can go all the way up to 128 gigabytes of RAM. Now in a normal system, 128 gigabytes of RAM is absolutely overkill unless you're doing like content creation and 3D design and motion graphics. But with that being said, we do have to remember that whatever RAM we put in the system will be divided by four as there will be four users using the computer and even divided a little bit more as the initial server that will be running all these virtual computers will also to need its own set of RAM. So we do need to keep in mind whatever RAM we're chucking in will be divided by at least four. So with that being said, for the RAM we grabbed ourselves a simple Corsair Vengeance kit of 64 gigabytes of RAM and we're going to be getting 16 gigs of RAM per user if we divide it equally. Now with that being said, there will definitely be people in your house who will not need 16 gigs of RAM so you could easily give them eight and keep eight over for yourself if you wanted to do that. Otherwise, we're just going to say we're going to average it out to 16 gigabytes each and in the future if we do need to upgrade we can easily double that as the motherboard will definitely support it. So in all, RAM is pretty much covered there. Now for storage and graphics cards this is where things get pretty odd and pretty crazy. Now for each four persons we get 500 gigabytes of Samsung SSD goodness so each user gets a 500 gigabyte physical SSD to use as their mass storage and main drive and all those types of things. On top of that we're also to adding a Corsair Force SSD. This is the 60 gigabyte model and is one of the lowest end versions. The reason why we grabbed this is number one being one of the cheapest drive options on PC Part Picker and also too we just needed a lower capacity drive to install the initial server and have as sort of like a caching device if we wanted to do that with our server. Then finally we grabbed ourselves a 4TB WD red drive and we're going to be using that for either backups or as additional storage if the user wants to. So we'll be giving the 500GB SSD to each user and then partitioning the 4TB red out into to one terabyte units for each person to use as either a backup to their main drive or go ahead and have as additional storage. Once again, not everyone in your house will be needing a whole terabyte plus a whole 500 gigabyte SSD and might be just fine with a 500 gig drive. So you could easily keep that one terabyte for yourself and just give them the standard SSD or maybe even give them half the SSD if they're just not using it. Now, as I mentioned before, graphics also too gets kind of odd as we wanted to have four people on this system, but we also too need to have more than four video cards as the actual server itself needs its own video card. Now in short you could easily just run this on an iGPU as what's found in most Intel CPUs and AMD ones but because we're on x99 we don't have the option of a built-in GPU so we have to get a little bit tricky with what we're running. So first and foremost we're running two GeForce GTX 960 ME editions. We checked this particular video card out before and I absolutely love this. I was able to push this extremely high and they're pretty ball and cut for what they are. Now these two video cards are for more of your gaming people in the particular house you're living in. Whether it's someone who's taking advantage of the gaming aspect of the video card or maybe they're doing video editing and rendering and those types of things where they can take advantage of the CUDA performance. Then on top of that we grabbed ourselves a 6990 which is an older video card but nonetheless still performs pretty great. Now the reason why we grabbed this particular card was because it is dual GPU. Now we need dual GPU because we're going to have four people people in this house. So the people who are not as much gamers as possibly you are or someone else who's an extreme gamer who wants to get the most out of their video cards can be ran off one of these 6990 cores. Now why do we need to do this? Well we needed to grab another video card, the GT630, to go ahead and run our server. And unfortunately we only have four PCI Express 60 next slots on our particular motherboard. We could have jumped up to a server grade one that had like eight 16 next slots but they were all jammed together and we wouldn't be able to fit all of our video cards in anyway. So to quick recap, we're going to be running two of our systems off a 6990 to go ahead and act as sort of a lower end system for someone who's not going to be pushing their cards as hard. We've got two GeForce GTX 960s for the gamers in the house and a GeForce GT 630 as sort of just a running system. So when you hit the on button, the actual server itself can initialize and start up the other video cards. So at this point, it's getting a little bit confusing, but do bear with us guys. So there is a few limitations there in 
our video cards. Now moving on to finish up our build, we grabbed ourselves the Fractal Design Define R4, which is an absolutely awesome case, features some pretty decent airflow for what it is, and is super silent, which is another thing that we really wanted. Just because you have a super high end PC doesn't mean it needs to make a super loud noise. We can keep it nice and quiet in the Define R4. On top of that, if I didn't mention it already, it looks pretty sweet. And then finally, we grabbed ourselves the EVGA Supernova P2 1600 watt PSU. Now that sounds pretty overkill for what we got, but we do need to remember that different people will be hitting this system at different times and it's going to have different loads and possibly down the line have even more drives and possibly even more powerful GPUs. And we don't really want to be trying to rip the server apart every time someone wants some extra RAM or some extra hard drive storage in their particular computer. On top of that, we're operating four systems plus a server on the top of it. So if we wanted to add more system drives to the NAS, we're going to need more power out of our drive. So we grabbed the Supernova because it was not only pretty powerful, but also too will suit what we need. So at this point, all we need to do is grab ourselves a copy of Lime Tech Server Pro and basically we're good to go. And also to, I guess, a copy of Windows for each person. What we're going to do is set up the server, install the Windows installs, and we're pretty much good to go. Each person's going to get their own certain video card and their own set of cores and own set of RAM and basically it's going to be like running everyone's own separate computers. Now at this stage if you're looking at the total build cost for this particular system you'll be finding somewhere around the $5,100 range or $5,100. Now you're probably thinking oh my gosh this is absolutely crazy why on earth would you spend that much money on a computer but you do need to remember you're essentially getting five plus systems out of this one computer and if you sort of break it down we're looking at about $1,200 per system and if you break it down even further you could go as low as $500 a system or even maybe $100 if you virtualize it out enough and have multiple different computers on the actual system. Now yes it does sound like quite a lot but we also too need to keep in mind that the performance each person will be receiving out of this computer is equal to or in some cases more powerful than what you could even get for a $1,500 build. And then on top of that we're also too going to be saving a lot of power as we're not having individual CPUs and individual different systems around the house kicking out their own heat needing their own cooler with extra fans and all these extra components that eat up electricity so if you're also too worried about the power bill we'll be using significantly less power by doing this virtualized setup. Overall virtualization is pretty cool and I will definitely be getting into it a lot more down the line and do let me know down below if you'll be interested in sort of like a how to virtualize your PC to maximize its performance. Otherwise guys that is what I would definitely build if I was doing a virtualized PC for four or more people in the particular house that I'm living in. Also too guys like the video if you liked it get subscribed if you want to stay tuned for more videos such as the virtualization one we teased just a second ago. Also too let me know down below do you guys already run virtualization or do you think it's sort of just rubbish and everyone should have their own system because it's pretty crazy what you can do with virtualization. You could have eight cores or 16 cores and other people can just deal with one or two cores. You can be a bit sneaky like that. Otherwise guys stay tuned to get subscribed and I'll see you next time. What?